How are you, my internet family, and welcome back for another video. This is going to be skincare related, as you can probably tell by the title. And if you're not a frequent viewer of mine, and if we don't already share that connection that only two acne sufferers can share, you're probably not one of the millions of people who've seen my face at various stages of breakouts. I struggled with hormonal acne in my teen years and then tried everything, took everything that the doctor gave me to try and treat the symptom instead of the cause of my acne. I then wound up with adult acne in my early 20s and to be honest for such a long time I was so hell-bent on getting clear skin that I didn't really ever think much about the fact that by the time I got done with acne I would probably then be faced with aging dehydrated wrinkled skin so I took it upon myself in my early 20s to adopt some skincare habits and I'm going to share all of them with you now in one place somewhere that I can direct people to because I get comments all the time online and in person from people who I don't know such as I can't believe you're almost 30 blah 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 and you know it's not for lack of trying I definitely do a lot to try and keep my skin in good condition but what's actually happened is my skin now looks so much better than it did 10 years ago which is just not what I expected to happen my skin now is so soft and smooth and it's so much dewier and healthier than 10, 15 years ago. Before I dive into my list, a little disclaimer, obviously different things work for different people. I'm not an expert. I've taken advice from many experts. Someone who I love is Caroline Hirons. Her blog is linked down below. Also the Skin Nerd, um, fantastic ladies. And yet all these tips are just a combination of experience and self-education. And you know, I've tried and tested all of these tips. Tip one, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say it, I'm sorry. Water, you have, you have to drink it all day every day. Yes, I am Irish and yes, I love a drink, but I try and keep my alcohol intake fairly low. A couple of drinks a week max and then I drink tons of water. I drink a lot of herbal tea as well. You gotta moisturize from within and remember that your skin is an organ and it gets affected by every single thing that you put into your body and everything that you put onto your body as well. That takes me to my next tip on skin care and skin cleansing. We as humans shower ourselves for a reason and we don't just wipe our bodies with face wipes and then go to bed and then wake up the next day, do a full day's work, go to the gym and then wipe our body with face wipes. We have to clean our bodies and like that, especially if you wear makeup using face wipes, it just doesn't do the job. For the last several years, I have double cleansed my skin every time that I clean it. To take off all my makeup and stuff, I just use micellar water, any micellar water and cotton pads. I do usually get the Garnier one. And then my friends, I cleanse the skin and one of my favorite brands ever is Pixie. They have so many beautiful products that are so good for your skin. This is their Rose Cream Cleanser and that's really enjoyable to use. Sometimes I use the Image Ageless Cleanser and I'll use it with a Konjac sponge. Um, I used to use those face brush things but these are just kind of a lot handier. This stuff has glycolic acid in it and acids so so important for the skin think of all those ingredients glycolic acid lactic acid hyaluronic acid which is moisturizing salicylic acid which is amazing for spots you can get these little bottles of solutions that have like two percent this two percent that of these kind of skincare acids but yet the ingredients of your skincare matters so much retinol is another amazing ingredient i did start using brands like environ still have some of their moisturizing botanical toner left and that's one big important thing is don't be a prey to these amazing skincare packaging kind of campaigns and all that kind of thing. Like the ingredients matter so much more than what is cool this week, you know? After cleansing, I use a toner probably once a day. I have the retinol tonic from Pixie and then I have the glow tonic. This is one that Pixie actually sent out to me, but I've bought them a million times. Like they know I'm a big fan of them. The glow tonic is such a cult product, but it just kind of gets rid of all the dead skin sitting on the top of your face, you know, it exfoliates and brightens and doing these things on a consistent basis over time adds up. It really adds up and pays off big time. At nighttime, I always use serums and essences and oils and just all of the hydration. Like, I don't know why I used to think adding hydration to my skin would make me break out more. It doesn't. Big, big lover of Pixie's Rose products. Um, during the day, I always, always use an SPF, especially because I use masks and stuff that have AHAs in them. So I'll always use an SPF. And my current favorite is the Ultra Facial Cream by Kiehl's, just because it 
it just absorbs really quick and easy and I can put makeup on over it. This stuff blocks UVA and UVB rays. Broad spectrum SPF 30, I believe SPF goes up to 50. I think 50 is the max. And going back to moisture when it comes to skincare, I think a huge thing in keeping my skin looking young has just been giving it constant boosts of moisture. Um, I love facial mists. I have facial mists from so many different brands. Three times a day you'll see me just... <laughs> They give you such a glowy boost and it's such a Korean thing to always put skin first and cosmetics second. So, you know, I know in Europe and America it used to be such a big trend to wear like really thick, heavy foundations and it was all about concealing. Whereas in Korea, they're so ahead of us, I swear. Always focus on the canvas that you're putting the makeup on so it'll look better. Makeup looks better on skin that is well taken care of. So I invest quite a lot into my skin and skincare and set aside a bit of time morning and evening for it. It is definitely part of my me time routine. You guys know I released the me time journals for like overall looking after your health and stuff like that. So yeah, that's lots of moisture, daily SPF, acids on the skin. Um, another one is sheet masks. So like facial, sheet masks for moisture. I remember when I was a teenager, the only face masks I'd ever really heard of were those kind of, the ones that peel the shit out of your face. Like they literally peel your skin off and leave your skin red or those real clay ones that are all about drying your skin up to remove sebum and, and whatnot. I know there is some great clay masks now and the Skincare technology is coming along, but the face masks I use the most nowadays is sheet masks. These come in a ton of varieties and I don't really have a favorite brand or favorite mask. I just like to play around with them. As I just touched on cosmetics, I did want to mention this because I feel like this has contributed to my skin's improvement recently. Like I've got less congestion, so my pores are a lot less congested now. And I think that's because I've switched to using a mineral base on my skin. I do still use basically non-mineral everything else, but for my actual base, um, switched up to the Jane Iredale makeup, their full coverage mineral BB cream. And this has SPF 25 in it, although I did see a video that scared the daylights out of me and that's why I always use a separate SPF. And it said that basically the amount of product that you would need to get that amount of SPF like to work you would have to slather your face it would have to be dripping in makeup so they said that that's a total scam on basically all makeup and I don't know if that's true I would love for you guys to just let me know if you know any more about that yeah I love this stuff I've been wearing it quite a lot lately and I've gotten a lot of nice comments about my the glow off of my skin and all that um it's a lot less cakey than the things that I used to always wear although you know the odd time I'll throw in a little bit of Elizabeth Arden double wear, like I'm not completely opposed to using other regular makeup brands. What I would suggest is if you're gonna use one of those kind of heavy foundations, maybe add a primer, kind of acts as a little bit of a barrier. Obviously then, no smoking is a big one, huge one, and diet is so important. I do so many videos, like what I eat in a day videos, and I share my food choices sometimes in my monthly vlogs. Those who are subscribed to me know I have a bunch of reasons why I try and make the best choices that I can with food. I used to struggle with eating disorders and I was very overweight at one point in my life. I also have IBS issues in my stomach when I eat certain foods. So I definitely try and include a lot of healthy protein, healthy fats. I do eat carbs, I just don't eat really processed food very often. It's very rare that I'll eat something that's super high, highly processed. Society made a big mistake back in the day when they were like, low fat everything and don't eat fat. Fat is the devil, like it's so untrue. Fat is so satiating in general, but it's also really good for your skin, it locks in moisture and hydration, it reduces irritation in your skin. Good quality protein sources are really important as well. It's all made up of protein, it's really important. And reducing sugar, massive. And I actually didn't reduce sugar for my skin originally. Um, unfortunately, I lost two teeth. I used to eat a lot of sugar when I was in school. And as you can see, I now have this <laughs> charming, very sexy denture that I have to 
deal with until I can get an implant, but too much sugar is just awful for us. We're not built to be able to handle the amount of sugary shit that we eat in the modern world. And even compared to some others, like I would still consume a fair bit of sugar. Like I do eat quite a bit of fruit, I will eat honey and things like that. But um, yeah, I prefer to focus on food that tastes really good and also can get in my antioxidants, keep me feeling full and feed my brain, my skin, and all the rest. Right, my next point relates to exercise and something that I feel like no one really ever talks about, and it's, it, it was huge for me to learn this and realize this, is that starting and stopping exercise routines constantly in my early 20s had my hormones going like this, and I was constantly breaking out. Like even recently, I started breaking out on my back. Thankfully, that's stopping now because I'm in such a structured routine, um, but even now, if I, start working out you know four times a week and then I stop for four weeks and then I start up again I just feel like my hormones just get all out of whack. So consistent exercise and that can be anything like even just walking doing high intensity info workouts in your bedroom that are like 10 minutes long or going to the gym and lifting weights which is what I do. I added in some incline walks on the treadmill and that gets like the sweat pushing everything out through my skin like it is so good for your skin. It balances your hormones, it increases blood flow to the skin in your face. Do it and then next point is to do it with stress and keeping your stress levels down. Oh my god. Oh. Even now when I get very, very worked up and overwhelmed, my skin, it just shows on my skin. My skin is such a good indicator of where I'm at in general. And it's not just that when I get stressed I make poorer food choices and that I'm not bothering with my skincare and all. It's, it literally releases stuff in your body that kind of ends up affecting your skin in whatever way. You can read into it. I know I'm not the best at articulating it, but just trust me, stress, skin, depending on your genetic makeup, it's like blah. Like I know there's people who have these amazing genes and just their skin always looks mwah, and they can be the most stressed out fuck you've ever met and they have this porcelain face, but know that that is not most people. Do things to manage your stress, just like read a book. Don't go on your phone at night time do deep breathing exercises, walks, yoga, all that nice stuff. And then not obsessing over your skin is a big one because when you're constantly freaking out about your skin, you know, if you get a breakout or it's really dry and flaky and stuff and you're freaking out about it and you're telling yourself that you look awful and blah, 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 blah. It's all this negative self-talk that can actually make you more stressed. I saw an interview Jennifer Lopez did and she was talking about her skin secrets or whatever. And I totally agreed with something she said was about working hard to keep your mindset positive. We live in a world where our brain's default setting is negative. Like, I think it's just human beings in general. Our brains can jump to worst case scenario or we can focus on all the horrible crap going on in the world, in the news. It's very easy to get worked up over all that stuff. Sometimes we don't even mean to do it, but we keep our body in this heightened state of stress. And it's just really good to try and disconnect from all that as much as you can and just try and be like, mm. Another biggie for me anyway, sort of linked in with diet stuff is supplements. And I have taken supplements that are specific to skin in the past, such as Acumax, which is amazing. I would definitely recommend that if you have acne. I'm not being paid by any of these brands, by the way. This is just gal to gal or gal to guy or whoever is watching. But uh, yeah, these are two recent favorites. I have collagen, pasture raised and grass fed collagen here. That is just very easy to throw into a smoothie. You can throw it into anything really. And this is kind of sold as like, joint care, um, but yeah, collagen is amazing for your skin. Also omega-3 oils, this is the Clean Marine for Women and it's omega-3 krill oil, has some other vitamins and all that, but this is for regulating hormonal activity and it says maintains normal healthy skin as well. And I definitely think that those things, like just consistently doing little things like that, for your skin it makes a massive difference. And then also just like not touching your face when you can avoid it. All these things for me have come together and have really made a huge difference for me. Um, I am currently on a journey with micro needling for my acne scars and I'm going to update you guys. So subscribe if you're new. Do keep an eye out for that video, but so far it's going really well. I've had three micro needling sessions, although I think I need eight or 12. Thumbs this video up if you enjoyed it. Comment any of your own advice down below. I would love to read your tips and I know that others would as well. And yeah, I'll see you guys in another video very, very soon.